Hello everyone. On today's Command Modern Operations tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to edit Quick Battles. Now, Quick Battles, for those of you who haven't played this feature before in Command, basically give you the ability to quickly generate a quick little fight, such as an air and surface anti-submarine warfare. You can do air to air, you can do a submarine duel, you can do a surface duel, and it gives you the ability to change each one of these options. Now, what you may not realize is it's actually very simple to edit these because they're HTML files. And there's actually a Lua script that backs this up. I'm not going to go into too much detail there. I'm just going to show you how to make basically quick changes. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to minimize command here. What I'm going to do is make my way into File Explorer, and then I'm going to go to where I keep my command files. Now, I have the Steam version of command, so I'm going to go to Common, Steam, Steam Apps, Common. I'm going to go to Command, Modern Operations. I'm going to go to this folder called Quick Battle. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. Each Quick Battle option on that screen is broken into an HTML file, a Lua file, and a style sheet. The good news is we don't have to know a lot about Lua and HTML to do some really awesome changes to these projects, which we're going to do. Now, the first thing I would like to do before I start editing these like crazy is I want to make a copy of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control click that onto my desktop. We'll go ahead and call it Abyss real quick, and then I'm going to drag it right back into that folder. You'll notice now if I go back to command, go back to my main start menu here and click on quick battle, that you see my folder name is what dictates the battle name. You can't see the air quotes, but I'm pretty sure you get the right idea. Now notice these are identical because we've made no changes to them. Let's go ahead and close that out. So how do we edit them? First of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that folder and I'm going to look at the HTML file first. Don't double click it. If you double click it, Surprise, you're going to get something that looks like this. This doesn't really help us very much. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, press open with, and then select notepad. The other method you can use, of course, is you could go to the start menu and type in notepad, and then you can drag it over. Or if you have a really, really solid way of editing HTML files that are not notepad, feel free to use that as well. So if you remember when we were on that screen, I can actually call it up by double clicking on it. Look at that. You can see that it gives us this little drop down box. This drop down box, believe it or not, is linked directly to this code here. So for example, you notice if I select the top option, the ANZAC class frigate, surprise, it's the top option right here. The only difference you'll probably notice is the fact that you have these two numbers here. Now you're looking at those numbers going, what are these two numbers? Well, for command veterans, you probably know this right away, but for those of you who are not, these two numbers refer to the database entry of that particular unit. So you'll notice that this particular unit, the FFH, that's a helicopter frigate 150 ANZAC, is number 959. Surprise, there's our 959 right there. Now you're probably asking, what is this little underscore doing? That's just telling us we're basically splitting our entry here. The second entry here, this tree 202, is basically the database entry for, I think you can guess what it's going to be, the helicopter that is associated with it. So in this case, it's going to be an MH60. I'm not, let's see if I dot 3202. 3202, awesome. Which means if we wanted to, we could actually change this from tree 202. Let's say, for example, I want to put a helix on the back of the helicopter. Let's go ahead and get myself a 27M. And uh, we got a 4327, which means I could come in here and change this to 4327. But then we get this number. Oh boy, so if this is the ship, this is the helicopter, what number do you think this is? This is the loadout of the helicopter. And this is where your skill foo might break down a little bit. Every loadout, believe it or not, has a database ID associated with it. So if I go to my helix real quickly, scroll down here, I can see that there's this ASW patrol outlet, which has the number 22060. So that means if I come in here and go, 22060, let's always confirm that, 22060, check, and we might as well update this too with a, a good old Helix helicopter. Now when we're done making our quick little edit here, I can just go File, I can click on Save, I'm going to close this out. Now if I go back to Command, I can go Start Menu, Quick Battle, Air to Air Service, look at this, ta-da! You can see my edit right away, but did it work? Well, I'm going to leave all these options default. I'm going to click on the Start button. Click on my ship. Ta-da! 
and you can see I've made an extremely quick and easy change to that with basically no effort at all, which is really, really cool. Like I said, you don't need to know the underlying code in order to make a quick change. So you're sitting there going, hey, that's actually pretty cool. What else can I do with it? Well, let me just crack open that HTML file again real fast. Let's go ahead and grab it with Notepad. Make sure that's closed out. Looks good. I can actually copy paste these to make a second set. So for example, let's say I wanted to edit what the enemy adversary is. In this case, I've got all these cool submarines. By the way, we're using the modern database, not the classic database for this. So you want to watch out for that. So what I can do here is I can say, well, let's add a, a neat submarine here. Let's go to my database real quick. Let's go ahead and type in submarine. Um, I'm a big fan of pump jet technology. If you are, this kind of reminds me of like a red October kind of thing here. And there is our database ID number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and then go ahead and paste this right here. But I'm going to change this number to match the 507 of my neat little aircraft, or my submarine, I should say, that I have right here. So I can now say PL877V Kilo with secret propulsion. Propulsion, comrade. And now I can go file, save, close this out, close this out. Now, if I go back up to start menu, click on battle, make sure you're using the one that you created. I can go up to here. I'm going to leave my helix on here, but this time I'm going to scroll down here and surprise, I can now do a kilo with secret propulsion, comrade, just like that. And that is how simple it is to edit it. Now, one thing you're probably wondering, and again, we're getting a little advanced by doing something like this is, what if we wanted to make it so that that was included in the random options? that's going to be getting a little bit more complicated. In order for us to do that, we'd have to actually open up the Lewis script that you have right here. So I'm actually going to go get myself a copy of Notepad again. Who knew this would be so useful? I don't like WordPad, by the way. Drag that in here. And now you can see what's actually going up under the hood. You're going to notice down here that this is a random table. This random table of values is generated off the Lewis script, not the HTML script, which means if we really, really wanted to keep our secret uh, propulsion comrade, we'd have to actually go in here and tell it that we intend to use that particular submarine. Again, don't worry about catching all these little details here. It's not as bad as it looks. Likewise, if we wanted to tweak this, all we'd have to do is go back to our original form. Let's go ahead and grab that real quickly. Uh, what is our secret propulsion, comrade? 507, comma, 507. And just like that, we can include that new submarine in our set. Just make sure you press file save, otherwise you're going to lose all the hard work that you did. The great thing about command is it will tell you if you goofed up somewhere. And remember, you can always go back to a backup. You can also do silly things like come up here and change what side everybody is, but you want to be very careful with this because if you goof that up, you can accidentally break something down here. So I recommend when you're first starting to mess with this, only mess with the values that you're comfortable with. Again, keeping it simple. Now you're probably saying, well, that was pretty cool. What if I want to do it for an airplane? Well, the good news is it's the same technique. Let's go ahead and I'll go back real quickly. If I were to make a copy, I'm not going to edit and save this time. Simple air-to-air -air engagement. Notice, of course, we have our two pieces there like we did before. I can drag that sucker in, and you can do the exact same method. Remember, it's going to be the database ID followed by the loadout. You've got to have a loadout or it's going to freak out just a little bit as you do these things. But like I said, if you do want to make sure you have a random aircraft, you're going to have to go in and add the database ID and loadout ID to that Lua. Like I said, when you're first messing with this feature, you can do that. Now, what if you want to go too far? I love going too far with certain things. So if you really, 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 really wanted to go too, 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 too far, you could actually build your own Lua script editing off of what we had from before and make your own private awesome super awesome battle. Imagine for a second that you wanted to design a mission where you're doing some seed work. You could actually build an entire mission using Lua, which is way beyond the scope of this tutorial, and then just use the HTML to feed values into it so that you can generate those battles dynamically. It's really, really slick. And again, there's some really awesome stuff in here. We can crank up the rain. We can crank up the temperature. We can have a lot of fun with this. We can even change where these two aircraft are located to each other. And again, the nice thing is the developers of this spent a lot of time giving you all all these details and tools literally in your hand that you can play with. 
All right, hopefully this tutorial is pretty helpful. If you have any questions, uh, just toss it down in the comments. I can't emphasize this enough. If you're going to play with this, I recommend making a backup of that folder and naming it your own thing. Uh, one thing you're probably also going to want to know is how to edit the HTML itself in order to add new fields. For example, if you want to add an enemy, let's say a P3 Orion, that's going to get a little advanced. If that's something you'd like to see, just kind of let me know and I'll show you how to build that. Enjoy.